So I'm gonna do another image captioning and actually visual question answering. We learned about it uh, when we were doing show and tell, show, attend and tell. Here's another attention and it's gonna be both top down and bottom up. And I'm gonna tell you what is bottom up. We take an image and previously we were taking that image. It was 256 by 256 by three. We were pushing it through a convolutional neural network. And let's say in the end, you would end up with another image that is 14 by 14 by, I don't know, 512. So you increase the dimension of your pixels. You make them from three to 512, and then you reduce the resolution from 256 to 14. Now you have 14 times 14 numbers to work with. And that was your K. Now here we are gonna find a different approach to giving us K and these vectors. So we want to turn an image into a set of vectors. What are we gonna do? We are gonna call an, an object detection system. So these we cover in part one of the course. So, so let's say you call FastRCNN. FastRCNN has two components. One is a region proposal network. So it's gonna propose what regions to work with. And then as soon as you have your regions, the next stage is that you're gonna pull those regions into a vector because these regions could have different sizes and then you are just pulling them. You're just taking the average of those vectors. So it has two stages, but don't worry about it. We go through the detail in part one. Here it's a black box that it's gonna give us uh, bounding boxes. We take those bounding boxes and then we average those vectors. So let's say you have a bounding box around an object that's gonna have a height and a width. Maybe this time it's gonna be 24 pixels long and 12 pixels wide. You take those pixels, they're gonna have dimensions of their own. They're gonna be d-dimensional. And then you compute the average. That's gonna give you one vector for that particular box. And then you are gonna have multiple boxes for each image. That's how you're gonna get your set of vectors. And let's say this is 248 dimensions. This is coming out of your neural network, your CNN. How do you train it? You're gonna train it on visual genome data. That one I want you to explore. And then uh, not only you're gonna predict the objects, but also you're gonna predict the attributes. What do I mean? Let's take this image as an example. So not only you are predicting that this person is a woman, you're predicting that this person has long hair. Not only you're predicting that that's a glass, you're saying that that's a black glass. That's a white outlet. This is a green bottle. This is food. And these are your boxes. So each image is gonna give you many boxes and each box is gonna give you a vector. And then you are gonna have K vectors for each image. So what is gonna be our captioning model? It's gonna be now that you have these vectors, and they're coming from a bottom-up framework. So bottom-up, it means that you have your image and then you vectorize it. You turn it into a set of vectors using, a, using an object detection system. Now we want to come up with our captioning model. In the end, an image goes in and we want to know the corresponding caption. We want to output the text. We are gonna use LSTMs, but the input to the LSTM is gonna be different. Let's see what that is gonna be. So now I'm here. There is gonna be two stages. There is gonna be a language LSTM, and then there is gonna be a top-down attention LSTM. And uh, this is just to give you a big picture of the method. I'm gonna keep referring to this figure as we go through the math. So let's do this top-down attention LSTM. X is gonna change. Now your language LSTM has its own hidden states. And let's say the hidden states, we are gonna mark them with a two on top of it. So that's how you index it. That's the language LSTM. It has its own hidden states. And these are vectors. You take that, that's an input. That's part of your X. V bar is the average image. So it's the average of all of these vectors. And you already predicted one word and you want to predict the next word. This is the one hot encoding of the word that you just predicted. And then you are doing a word embedding. So this is the previous hidden state. I just mentioned that. V bar is the average of those vectors in your set. That's the embedding of the word that you just generated. And this is your word embedding matrix. Sigma is gonna be your vocabulary. The absolute value of the sigma is the size of your vocabulary, e is your embedding dimension. That's a hyperparameter you choose. 
and pi t are the one hiding encoding of your inputs or input word. And then you have your LSTM. It is the first LSTM. So that's the top down LSTM. And basically this LSTM is paying, at, is paying attention to the average vector in your image. Then the attention mechanism is gonna come in when you are doing your language LSTM. You have an attention budget of one. You're gonna spread it among your image, among these boxes. How much attention should I pay to the face, to the food, to the outlet, etc.? And then we are gonna know that it's gonna have a softmax. And then whenever you're paying attention, you take the hidden state of the LSTM at that particular location that you want to predict at that particular time. And then that hidden state needs to pay attention to all of these vectors. So there is gonna be VI and HT. So I see that there are some of you following some tutorials online, especially there is a PyTorch tutorial online and they're implementing their attention not correct. So always for your attention, it's the hidden state of your LSTM and then uh, the encoded part. It's either an image or a text, etc. So be careful. Don't follow those tutorials blindly. So you have to be careful. And then that's gonna give you some scores that you can push your, through your softmax to turn them into numbers that add up to one. And then your language LSTM, this guy, is gonna take as input your v hat, it is this term here, and then it's gonna take the previous hidden state of h1 from the, the, attend, the LSTM below. And then the output, you want to predict the next word, you have a softmax of the size of your entire vocabulary. And then you can write down your likelihood. This is the chain rule for the probabilities. And then you're gonna have an objective. You're gonna have some ground truth. This is your label. This is your correct caption for one image. And then you're gonna have this last function per each image, per each pair of image and caption. And this is gonna give you a cross entropy. And basically you're taking the log of this term up there. Now, what is the outcome? You can say two men playing Frisbee in a dark field, and then you want to focus on, uh, you want to say, if I take the word Frisbee, where in the image we are paying attention to, or the network is paying attention to. And basically, you're reading off the maximum alpha IT. You know, T, T is your Frisbee. I is going to be one of these boxes. And then the biggest one is where you're attending the most. That's going to be attending on the Frisbee. And then you can also do question answering. What is a task? An image and a question goes in. You know the corresponding answer because now you want to visualize where you are attending. So you are giving it the answer. And then you are asking the network, what are you thinking? Where are you attending to? And the network is attending to the stove here. And that's why the answer was a kitchen. But how do we do visual question answering? It is different from captioning. For captioning, you have an image you push it through your neural networks, and then that's gonna give you the corresponding caption. Here, an image and a question are gonna go in and an answer is gonna come out. A probability of the correct answer is gonna come out. So how do you model this? Let's say, I have, let's say you have a question that is 14, uh, it's a sequence of 14 numbers, 14 integers, because you are, you are tokenizing this sentence. So that's gonna give you 14 integers. The first stage is you do your word embedding. You turn your sequence of 14 integers to a sequence of 14 vectors of 300 dimension. You do the same thing for your image. You take your image, you push it through your faster RCNN, and then that's gonna give you K vectors. So it's gonna give you K vectors, and each one is gonna have this dimension. And then again, let's go back to the word embedding. You take those, those word embeddings, those, those, the outcome of the word embeddings, that's gonna give you a sequence of vectors. You take the sequence of vectors, you push it through a GRU unit or GRU network, and that's gonna give you a sequence of another vectors of different dimension. So it's gonna be 14 by 300 that goes in, and perhaps 14 by 512 is gonna come out. But then we are gonna take the last element or the average of those outcomes. That's gonna give you a single vector that is 512 dimensional. So a vector that is 512 dimensional is here. And that vector, you're gonna concatenate this with these features, the image features. You're gonna do some weight multiplication, some nonlinearity, 
and then another weight multiplication and a softmax. And that's going to give you how much attention. After the softmax, these numbers are from zero to one and they add up to one. That's going to tell you how much attention to pay to each one of these boxes, to each one of these K boxes. You add them up. So that's basically this operation here. That's going to give you a single vector that is 2048 dimensional. You first correct the dimension, add a nonlinearity on top of it. Now you have a vector coming out of your GRU that is 512 dimensional. After multiplying by a matrix, applying a nonlinearity, you get 512, 512. They have the same dimension now. You can multiply. This is element wise product. Then you're going to do one other matrix multiplication, nonlinearity matrix multiplication, and a sigmoid to turn these numbers into probabilities. And this is basically the score for each of these answers. So your answer could be kitchen, etc. And then you have multiple options that's going to give you the correct answer. So that's another task. It's different from image captioning. Can I ask a question? Sure. So um, are there a fixed number of candidate answers? Is that what this is saying? Yes. So it's a multiple uh, answer questions. So it's okay. multiple choice. Mm -hmm. Could you do yeah. something where you, like something similar to the captioning, um, where you just look for words in your vocabulary that you think answer the question? Yes. So you could do that also. You can treat that as a generative model. You okay. can do that. It's exactly what we were doing with language models or even the image captioning. So you keep predicting the next word. Another way is when you predict the start and end of the answer in a paragraph. That one is also question answering. Okay, but this is the simplest one. Okay, that makes sense. Any other questions? Okay, perfect.